Hey everyone, welcome back to the Vision Refocus channel. I'm Dr. Kevin Cornwell, and today we're gonna to be talking all about blue light. I often get asked about the dangers of blue light, so I wanted to put this video together to explain exactly what it is and how it can affect the overall health of our eyes and body. We'll also go over a few ways we can protect ourselves from this inevitable part of our environment. Let's jump right in. So blue light is quite the popular topic nowadays with the amount of time we all spend on screens as well as artificial lighting in our environments. If we look at the spectrum of visible light, the specific wavelengths that are of concern include those found in the 380 nanometer to 500 nanometer range. Light found in this range is considered short wavelength blue light or high energy visible light. So most light sources do emit some level of blue light with the sun being the largest. Other common sources include artificial lighting in our homes and work environments, as well as most electronic screens, including our TVs, cell phones, tablets, and laptops. So today's biggest concerns around blue light exposure include circadian rhythm disruption, as well as various detrimental effects to our eyes and vision, including digital eye strain, increased myopia progression, and macular degeneration. Let's unpack a few of these. So the most immediate detrimental effect that blue light exposure has on our bodies is its disruption on our sleep quality. Our circadian rhythm is our body's natural sleep-wake cycle and is highly regulated by the 24-hour light-dark cycle. Our bodies were developed to expect blue light from the sun in the morning and darkness at night or the absence of blue light in the evening, basically. When specific light-sensitive cells inside our eyes sense blue light, Cortisol is released and melatonin is suppressed. Cortisol is our stress or alertness hormone and melatonin is our sleep hormone. This transition of hormones happens each morning when we wake up. When we are exposed to blue light at night, our bodies are tricked into thinking that it is still daytime out and we will not produce the melatonin necessary to fall asleep properly. Studies have even shown that evening blue light exposure from digital devices can inhibit the release of melatonin by up to two hours, disrupting our circadian rhythm and preventing deep quality sleep. Artificial lighting in our home or work environment can also cause this phenomenon as well. Not only does melatonin suppression compromise our sleep quality, but some studies have even shown melatonin suppression from electronic devices can even increase the risk for other chronic diseases. These include insulin resistance and type 2 diabetes, high blood pressure, seasonal affective disorder, even certain types of cancers. This is likely due to the fact that melatonin has powerful antioxidant and anti-cancer properties within our bodies. So there's also some concern for possible retinal damage and an increased risk for the development of age-related macular degeneration with blue light exposure. However, the jury is still out on this one. The shorter wavelengths of blue light are able to penetrate into the deeper tissues of the eye, like the retina, um, so there is definitely a valid concern here. Some studies have shown evidence of early retinal photoreceptor damage from blue light exposure. However, further research is necessary to determine whether or not this actually leads to sight-threatening levels of macular degeneration. So they've even done studies looking at the protective effect on the retina of blue light filtering intraocular lens implants during cataract surgery. And unfortunately, no benefit was found. These patients still went on to develop macular degeneration. Therefore, at this time, the use of blue light filtering lens implants during cataract surgery remains speculative. Myopia progression is another concern with increased amounts of screen time. Myopia, also known as nearsightedness, can occur when the eye permanently elongates to accommodate for extended periods of near focusing. While this phenomenon may not be directly related to blue light per se, studies have definitively shown that extended periods of near work and screen time, along with less time spent outdoors, can significantly increase the risk for myopia progression. When people become increasingly nearsighted, their retina gets stretched thinner and thinner potentially increasing the risk for holes, tears, and detachments of the retina later on in life. I always like to use the pizza dough analogy. So if, you have, if you're making a pizza and you stretch the dough too thin, you might get some thin spots, holes, and tears. And that same phenomenon can happen in the back of our eye and our retina. People with myopia are also at an increased risk for other sight-threatening eye diseases such as glaucoma and myopic maculopathy. 
The last thing I wanted to mention as far as blue light and its impact on our eyes and vision is a phenomenon called digital vision syndrome. Up to half of all users of digital devices can experience this, and it goes by many other names. But basically, it's a collection of symptoms that can occur with our eyes after prolonged periods of screen time. So things like blurry vision, headaches, eye strain, or eyes that generally feel dry, burning, or watery. This can occur due to our, our decreased blink rate and our tendency to overfocus during prolonged periods of screen time. In fact, when we're staring at screens, our blink rate is reduced by up to 60%, which can have a tremendous impact on how our eyes feel. So we just talked about a lot of stuff. Let's wrap up with a few ways we can go about mitigating some of the detrimental effects from blue light in our environments. A big focus here should be spent around optimizing sleep hygiene, and this is especially important for those with chronically poor sleep. Avoiding blue light at least two hours before bed each night is your best bet. This includes television, cell phones, and most other digital devices. Consider going for a walk or reading a book. Updating the ambient lighting in your home can also have a positive impact. There are a lot of blue light blocking light bulb options available today, and they can easily be swapped into your home lighting fixtures. Often you'll see the words blue light or just sleep in the marketing for these light bulbs. And for those of you that have to be on screens and electronic devices at night before bed, consider the use of a blue blocker app such as Flux, Iris Tech, or Night Shift Mode on devices that enable this. You can also use over-the-counter blue blocker glasses. These work pretty well for a lot of people. You can even find these with low amounts of plus power for those of you that already wear over-the-counter glasses for near work. You can also get blue blocker lens coatings put on your prescription pair of glasses as well. And while the jury is still out on blue light exposure and the risk for developing macular degeneration, supplementing with eye healthy nutrients can provide an additional layer of protection. This is especially true for those at an increased risk for developing macular degeneration. This includes those with a positive family history for the disease or a history of smoking. These eye healthy nutrients are primarily lutein and zeaxanthin. These provide protective pigments to the retina and allow it to better absorb blue light. They can primarily be found in brightly colored vegetables, but are also found in over-the-counter eye vitamins and supplements as well. And for those of you experiencing symptoms of digital eye strain, taking frequent breaks can help tremendously. The popular 20-20-20 rule is a good one to remember. Basically, every 20 minutes, you'll take a 20 second break and focus your vision off into the distance on something 20 feet or so away. Also, because we don't blink as much when we're staring at screens, the use of preservative-free eye drops can help provide some additional lubrication to prevent our eyes from feeling dry and irritated when we're on our computers and other digital devices. Also, having a comprehensive eye exam can help determine whether or not your eyes are being affected from blue light as well. So I hope you found this video informative and that you now have a better understanding of how blue light exposure can affect our eyes and vision. If you have any further questions, feel free to leave them in the comments section below and I'll get back to you. Also, for more videos on eye health, feel free to check out the other videos on our channel and consider subscribing. And thanks again for watching and we'll see you in the next video.